The second race for a railroad commissioner is between Barry Smitherman and Greg Parker. Trusted conservatives seem to be torn between these two candidates. So it's unfortunate that Smitherman never responded to our invitation to tonight's forum. If he had been here, we would have grilled him about his involvement with those smart meters that many of us are fighting. I could throw a quick note here. Um, Julie made a reference earlier about my radio show, and today's show was all about the smart meters and our ability to opt out. And just so that you know, we had um, David Simpson, who's a state representative, and he made it very clear that the legislature did not write that bill to take that right away from us. The UC has overstepped their boundaries, and the power companies are definitely misrepresenting our rights as citizens. You do have the right to refuse a smart meter. Don't back down. <laughs> Um, and just so that you know, um, we archive our shows, and I expect that show to be, normally it's archived by Monday afternoon, but my graphic artist just had a baby, <laughs> so I think it will probably be uh, out there by Tuesday afternoon, and you can go to waynerichardshow.com and hear the entire interview. Thank you. Congratulations. It is a fact that the Republican Party has only a few African-American leaders. And because of that, when a black conservative comes along, we tend to be very supportive and encouraging. However, you have been accused of playing the race card to your advantage by calling opponents racist. You've also been accused of only labeling yourself conservative in order to get elected. What is your response to those accusations? Okay, number one, didn't happen. I would say it. And number two, I think that's really uh, a fallacy from the standpoint. I don't um, call myself a conservative to get elected because um, I am a conservative. And as a matter of fact, when I first ran for public office in 2004, there's been some misnomer out there that I was actually voted in a Democratic primary in 2004 and voted in a Democratic primary in 2008. But the fact remains is I was a Republican nominee for county commissioner in 2004 and in 2008. In 2004, I beat a 12-year incumbent Democrat to get the position, and I beat another popular Democrat to hold the position because I am a conservative. Now, um, I don't, I don't like to say a lot of things from the standpoint of um, just to say it. I like to make sure my actions display it, and you can see that from the standpoint that uh, while on Commissioner's Court, we passed an order to limit the use of eminent domain. That's conservative. Commissioner's Court, we, uh, right now, taxes are lower now than they were when I took office. As a matter of fact, we actually lowered the tax rate twice to give money back to our taxpayers. That's concerning. So a lot of times, a lot of people want to say they are, but don't want to show it. Now, you know, my opponent's not here to defend himself, so what? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Smitherman, while putting windmills up in West Texas that will never pay us back studies show, and also going, uh, mandating smart meter zones, going to the White House to promote those windmills and smart meters, working with the Liberal Environmental Defense Fund to actually promote the Chevy Volt. Is that conservative? No. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Greg Parker, please tell us what differentiates you from your opponent. Oh, I didn't just lay that out. <laughs> I, I am, from, from starting, I'll tell you this. I can complete my PhD in public policy and administration. The dissertation research is actually on oil and gas exploration and its correlation to economic growth. Courses from MIT in energy economics, public economics, sustainability. I like to tell folks I've been educated by the liberals, and I'm still conservative. <laughs> also, authored a book on the myth of global warming. I've even written articles against Agenda 21 and against smart meters. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. separates me from my opinion. Okay, we can clap. Just go ahead. I'll listen to that. What separates or what makes me more qualified than my opponent is my opponent is an investment banker whose only, who's only job for the last several years has been appointed by Perry to several different boards and commissions. I've earned what I've got. And I know he's been badgering me about, oh, I'll run for office. I've earned what I have. 
And, and I can truly honestly say the difference between us, honestly, is one is arrogant and one wants to serve the people. There you go. Greg, I have two audience questions. I don't want to take them. <laughs> Over 600,000, 660,000 acres will lose, will lose the use of private property. Let me do this over. Over 660,000 acres will lose the use of private property because of the deal cut with the EPA. What will you do to prevent more of the same type of compromising deals? Okay, now that's a very good question. I will tell you this, let's start off, um, and I only have a couple minutes, but I'll start from the um, beginning. I mentioned before how I want to protect your private property rights, and I've shown evidence of such. And also, I will tell you, which has been reported in the Energy Report and several other things, I personally do not believe that a third party should have the right of eminent domain. I do not. I think it's important that private property be protected because 96% of all property in the in state of Texas is held by private owners. And it's important because private property is the cornerstone of any republic. You can clap. <laughs> So in saying that, while you've got this um, this deal that was cut, and I think it's just that a deal. I think our state law, our state uh, elected officials actually cut a deal which is detrimental from us. 600,000 acres between the two states of Texas and New Mexico. 250,000 right here in the state of Texas. Well, guess what? Somebody's got to give up that property. But didn't I just mention that 96% of it is in private hands? So somebody's got to give it up. Now. Whether or not the imminent use of imminent domain has been done, I can probably guarantee you it probably will be. The fact is, no more deals need to be cut. The reason why I say that is because the Railroad Commission itself is actually taking money from the EPA. My opponent on there now saying, oh, I want to stop the EPA, but he got his hand under the table taking their money. It's time we get the EPA out of the Railroad Commission and out of Texas and no more deals. One more question for the audience. How does sustainable development, EPA environmental justice, biodiversity impact our land rights, oil, gas, and coal business? That's a good question. I just talked about that in Odessa just a day or two ago. I would say this. First of all, if, how many of us in here know Agenda 21? Okay. I'm, I'm preaching to the choir. Okay. <laughs> Agenda 21, as we know, is pretty much a social... 30 seconds? Okay. <laughs> it will affect quite a bit, given the fact that um, Agenda 21 seeks to restrict the use of energy consumption as well as limit individuals into pockets of clusters through the biodiversity treaty. The fact of the matter is... Um, we need a, a commissioner that understands how Agenda 20 work, 21 works, and if you think I look like Chris Rock, then Chris Rock's going to vote for Greg Parker. 